Let me ask you about a racial question, whether it's Tyler Hansborough or Michael Beasley, and just the idea that there hasn't been a great white American player in the NBA probably since Chris Mullen. It's been a long time, and it would make sense that general managers would look at that and say to themselves, well, the chances of me getting a great white college star and having him be a great white pro aren't very good. If someone with Tyler Hansborough's resume, 22 and 10, college player of the year, were black, do you think people might say he's unathletic or he's not athletic enough for the next league? I've never had a discussion uh, with anybody in the NBA or uh, with anybody regarding the draft about a player's race. Um, you know, there, there, are, there are countless uh, African-American players that have been discussed as to their athleticism. Whether they, uh, uh, any particular player, irrespective of race, is athletic enough. Does he, well, I remember a few years, Michael Sweetney, when he came out, people were talking about his athleticism. Uh, does, can he score over Not, not, not with this resume, though, Jay. Not, What's that? not with this resume. 22 and 10, best player in the sport? 22 and 10, what are you talking about? Tyler Hansbrough. Oh, his, uh, his, you mean his, his stat, 22 points, 10 rebounds a game. Yes. Uh, I thought you were talking about some sort of record. I was like, they weren't 22 and 10. Um, it, it, well, he's player of the year, but there have been other players. Well, Chris Carroll was player of the year in, in the uh, – in, in All American and all that, when he came out and uh, wasn't drafted in the first round, I don't even think he was drafted. So, so I, I think you're wrong there. Uh, and I think I, I, I'm not a sociologist, but I, I tend to think I've never discussed race before with regard to a prospect, and I, I don't even know where to begin uh, to to sort of all right, let's uh, express it. Let's, how let's... I, you know, sort of the displeasure I would have in having that kind of discussion. Well, let's do it another way then. Let's have let's be displeasurable in another way. If Michael Ble- Beasley were white, you know, Dan, there are so many ways that you're displeasurable. If that's even a word, <laughs> I, I don't that, know there are so is. many directions we can go. Let, let's start. <laughs> if Michael Beasley were white, you don't think that a GM would have trepidation? Same guy, same exact guy in every way that he would say to himself, "Well, God, it's been 20 years since a player, a great white American player, has been great in the NBA." What so, you, so, so you think it's more? You think it's more uh, their nationality or their race? What, what are you saying? Now, not, now you're saying that, that the the NBA people don't have any trepidation with regard to white Europeans? Well, there are more examples of white Europeans like Dirk and Manu uh, starring, like Peja Stoyakovic. There, there are more examples of them being stars. Who's the best white American player in the NBA? Is it Dunleavy? Hey, Dan, Dan, no offense, but this is stupid. And and I'm not going to engage in this. I mean, I you know, I'll, I'll do respect. I mean, if you guys want to talk about this, I, I'm I'm here to talk about whatever you want outside of this. No, but this, we, this no, is stupid. We don't have to talk about anything, but it's not stupid. And you can't start yep, a sentence. It is. You it's can't, stupid. You can't start a you, sentence. You can't, you can't sit there and talk race with regard, and then and then bring nationality into it and act like a, you know the whole race thing uh, is the issue. And then you say, well, well, now now with, but it doesn't apply with regard to uh, to white Europeans. That doesn't make any sense at all. Jay, you can't. Start Start a sentence with no offense and then say this is stupid. Okay, then take offense. It's stupid, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. You want to talk about something else? No, thank you. Good talking to you. You too. Jay Billis of ESPN. Attention. This is the Dan Levitard Show. I'm not going to waste my time, Dan. Forget Dan Levitard. Thank you. Stu Gatz. You're welcome. Attention. I think that's insulting, and I don't like to insult people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you guys do better interviews than this. Call me another time. This is the real base. We got a situation on our hands. Attention. How do you think? You know what? I'm covering that time here. I gotta get going. Wes, this is uh, unbelievable. <laughs> Goodbye. Attention. Damn, no offense, but this is stupid, and and I'm not going to engage in this. Jay, you can't start a sentence with no offense and then say this is stupid. Okay, then take offense. It's stupid, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. You want to talk about something else? No, thank you. Good talking to you. Base is pumping. Mike, you're in the news a lot lately because of your divorce. I don't talk about it, and I was told I wasn't going to talk about it on the radio, and you're going to try to come out of left field and kind of get me with it. Just was going to ask if you're sick of it. Apparently you are. It doesn't matter what you were going to ask me. I'm telling you what we're going to talk about. Yeah, uh, I guess, you know, winning isn't good. And I guess, you know, caring about your dog who died because he drowned in the pool isn't good. I finally <laughs> agree. I no, 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 no. He is he gone? No. I'm not going to waste my time, Dan. Forget We got a situation on our hands. You know, I'm going to hang up now. You don't know what you're talking about. But it's very strong. It's all I'm saying. I Goodbye. Wanna... Do you
you go into the nightclub with these Kellogg's products and just drop them on the floor with your face on them? Here's Dan Levitard and Stugatz on Sports Talk 790, the ticket. We got a situation on our hands. 